Yes, my cats are going to take care of Dawn while I'm gone. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, Connor is going to play recordings of the yoga class on Friday and Monday here. So you can come on down and practice here or you can practice in your home because it'll be a broadcast on CCTV as usual. So you have choices. So, and I will be back then um, after P Easter and Passover are over. So there we go. naturally. What kind of smell do you want to get rid of? Let's get organized for yoga today. Good morning, everybody. My name's Deborah, and we're going to do our yoga. Don't forget that everything I say is a suggestion. It's not a demand. So if I suggest anything that is inappropriate for your body because you have injuries, arthritis, surgeries, or you're just tired, skip it. Take a little breather. Rejoin us when you're ready. And remember, yoga is not supposed to hurt. If it hurts, stop. Alrighty, so let's get into our favorite, hello, starting position. If you're in a chair, move your butt forward so you're not leaning against the back of the chair. Put your feet flat on the floor, hip width apart, looking like the number 11. For those of us on the floor, okay, you look great. Roll your pelvis forward, pull your abs in and up, lift your breastbone, Ask your shoulders to go back and down, and then lift the top of your head. Now let's close our eyes for a few seconds and look inside to see how we're doing today. How's our hearing? How's our skin? How's our breathing? How's our mood? And opening our eyes, we can extend our arms, inhale up. And then two fountain breaths. Good, all righty. So let's say good morning to one of our shoulders, making the largest forward circle that we're capable of making. Sometimes we have flat spots, and then reverse that one. Good morning, shoulder. Time to wake up. The coffee is done. Can't smell that anymore. Relax that one and say good morning to the other shoulder. Time to rise and shine. Get those juices flowing, and then reverse that one. 
Good. All righty. Release that. Sit up straight and tall and turn and look over your right shoulder. Come back to center. Look over your left shoulder. Come back to center. Good. All righty. Let's do a few cat and cow stretches. So your head comes forward as you exhale. You're sinking down. As you begin to inhale, lift your breastbone. Look up. Exhale, sinking. Inhale, lifting. And go back and forth at your own pace, whatever works for your body. As long as you're coordinating your movement with your breathing. When you've had enough of that, come back to center and let's stir the pot. Around and around we go. The size of the circle is entirely up to you. And then reverse that one. All righty, good. Come back to center. Let's push away our imaginary wall. Fan your hands out so that your fingers are as separated as they can be and really push. A nice straight elbow. You can really feel the effort from the middle of your back. Then make a soft fist. Point that at the floor. Trina, why don't you come over here and use this chair? Okay, good. Let go of that. And let's see. Let's Push this wall away again, and then index finger to thumb and squeeze, second, third, and fourth. Backwards, fourth, third, second, and first. Good. Release it, and we'll play a few piano scales. The idea is to get every little joint to stretch and flex. Then palms up and gently let your hands flop. It's a little wrist stretch here. And if you want, you can do back and forth. Good. Release that. Take a breath. Let's do the exaggerated chewing. So your entire face gets involved in this. Eyes, everything. Chew on the left. Chew on the right. Make your chin go in a circle. Go backwards. Open wide. Pucker up. Look up. Pull your lower lip over your upper lip. Come back to center. Take a deep breath and let your face relax. Good. All righty. So let's see. What else would we like to do? Let's um, bring our arms straight out. Turn one palm up. Take a look at it. And then the other one up. Take a look at that one. Go back and forth. Good. Release that. Let's reach up tall with our one arm. Bend your elbow. Let it rest on your back. Push that elbow toward the ceiling. Whatever you can do. Breathe. And then bring it down. Good. The other arm up. Bend that elbow. Take your other hand. Push that elbow toward the ceiling. Good. Release that. Let that go. Take a breath. Pardon me. Yoga always does that for me. 
<laughs> okay, let's see. Let's do the pulling and the pushing. So make your hands into the little hooks, put your hooks together and pull. Now, if you don't like putting your hooks together like this, you can always grab your opposing wrist. Good, release that. The pushing position is palms together in prayer position or knuckles together if you have wrist issues and push. Good, release that. Let's go back into the pulling position and pull. Good, release that. Back to the pushing position and push. Good, release that, take a deep breath. Give everything a loosening wiggle. Ah, let's do the seated spinal twist. So if you're sitting in a chair, you don't have to change anything because you're in the right position. If you're on the floor, it's right leg over left, left arm to right knee, everybody pivot to your right. Make sure your spine is vertical, your abs are engaged, your breastbone is lifted, and here we are. Breathe into it. Now we're warmed up, so let's twist back a little bit deeper. And release it. Come back to center, loosen up just a little bit. If you're on the floor, it's left leg over right, right elbow to left knee. Everybody twist to your left. Use your hands as needed on the floor or your chair to help you with your twist. Firm up your abs to support your viscera and your spine. Lift your breastbone and breathe. When you're ready, let's twist back a little bit deeper. and release it. Come back to center, give everything a nice little wiggle. We are going to do the frog. Now you can do the frog sitting in your chair. You can do the frog standing up, doesn't matter. If you're gonna stand up though, you have to keep both feet on the sticky mat. That's where it earns its reputation. Alrighty, so separate your knees or your feet wide apart. Rest your hands on your knees if you're sitting. Keep your head and chest up, lean forward. You're simply going to go until your hips say, wait a minute, I don't wanna go there. At that point, you stop. You breathe encouragement into those big joints. Be patient with them. They're not accustomed to this idea. You don't do it but twice a week. If you can comfortably get your palms down on the floor, go ahead and do that and release your head and neck. However, you are safer if you keep your hands on your knees. Now you can stay as long as you like, but if you're ready to come out of it, simply lift your head and chest as you come up and let's all stand up. Give everything a loosening wiggle, take a breath. Ah, very good. Okay, so of course we're going to start in Tadasana as we always do. We want our feet to be on the floor looking like the number 11, hip width apart. Any doubts you have about what hip width means, just put your fists together, put them on the floor between the ball mounds of your feet, and presto, that's it for you. 
All righty. So let's sway a little left and right. Feel what that means for the bottom of your feet. Your bones are pressing into the flesh between them and the floor. Come back to center. Make sure your weight is evenly distributed. Pull yourself up through your legs. Pull your abs in and up as you lift your breastbone. Ask your shoulders to go back and down and lift the back of your head. Take a nice deep breath. You feed and cleanse your body with every breath. And this posture gives you the maximum lung capacity. It also makes you look 10 years younger. As we age, we lean forward and we just slouch. In this posture, look how fabulous we all look. And we're also improving our immune system. What's not to like? Let's bring our arms out, interlace your fingers, notice which one's on top, reverse, stretch, bring your hands behind your back, interlace and lift. Feel the nice stretch in your pectoral muscles. Good, release that. Let your arms come out again. This time interlace with the other finger on top. Reverse, stretch, interlace again and lift. Breathe into the stretch. Good, release that, release your legs. Give a deep breath again. Let me think, we did warrior two and triangle yesterday or last time. So we're gonna do warrior three today. So we need our chairs for this. Most of us are not strong enough to do this without a chair. Although the, the eager beavers who've been doing yoga since the age of five do it without chairs. So we're simply gonna rest our hands on our chairs, make sure all four feet of the chair are on the mat or parked against the wall, you may choose, and simply walk backwards. Your ears come down between your arms. When you get to full stretch, wiggle your feet. That'll give you another millimeter or two of stretch. This is downward facing dog. You may stay here or pick up your right straight leg, send it straight out behind you at hip height. Reach forward with your arms, at the same time, you're reaching backward through your right heel. Now, of course, don't let your hip roll to the right. Keep that right hip facing the floor and breathing. So you're reaching forward, you're reaching backwards and you're breathing all at the same time. This is a lot of work. When you're ready to come out of it, put your foot on the floor, walk forward, and stand up. Give everything a little wiggle, take a deep breath. Ah, very good. All righty. So we're going to do, we, warrior three people are going to do the other side. So if you did war, um, downward facing dog, you have a choice. You can either take a breather or do it again. Here we go, walking backward, wiggling feet. Now pick up your left straight leg, send it straight out behind you, reaching backward through your heel without rolling your hip, reaching forward with your arms. If you want, you can look at your ankle and you can see how much work your ankle is putting into this. This is great preparation for our balance postures because it really demands a lot from our ankles. And when you're ready to come out of it, put your foot on the floor, walk forward and come back to vertical. Take a deep breath. 
Ah, very good. All righty. So let's see what well, we let's do our um, side stabilizers. We've got our chair here. Let's take advantage of the chair. Put your left hand on the chair or make your left hand available to the chair, whichever you prefer. Pick up your right straight leg, cross it in front of your left, off to the right, behind your left, off to the right, in front. Now here's the challenge. Keep those right toes facing forward. Do not let them wig out to the right. Speed is irrelevant. Use whatever speed makes you happy. Good, put your foot down, shake out your standing leg, rearrange yourself so that you and the chair are happy and you can have your right hand available to the chair whenever you want it. Take your left straight leg, cross it in front of your right, off to the left, behind your right, off to the left, etc. Now, focus on those toes. Once again, we want those toes to always face forward. Good, put that foot down, shake out your standing leg, take a deep breath, give everybody a little loosening. Let's do an inversion. So move your furniture out of the way so you can have plenty of room. We're gonna go down with a swan dive. Put your feet right back into Tadasana. We're going to inhale up. Exhale. Stretch forward. Relax your back, relax your neck, and just hang upside down. Whether or not you touch the floor is irrelevant. Breathe encouragement into all the stretching muscles. Twist to the right. Take hold of whatever part of your body is convenient and keep breathing. Notice how different this feels over here. Come back to center, twist to the left, take hold of whatever is conveniently available and keep breathing. When you're ready, come back to center, put your hands on your thighs, come up to a flat back and stand up. Give everything a wiggle, take a deep breath. Ay, 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 ay. All righty. So let's stretch our shoulders a little bit. I'm going to turn around. <clears throat> so we're going to take our right arm up to the ceiling. We're going to take our left arm to our waist, bend your right elbow, and now begin to wiggle your fingers so that they come close to each other. Some people are going to be able to touch their fingers to each other like that. Some people can actually get a grip on their other hand. Whether or not you're able to do either of those is irrelevant. Just do the best you can. Let the rest go. The stretch is what we're interested in, not whether or not your hands touch. When you're done with that, slowly unwrap. Give them a little wiggle. Take a deep breath. Ah, okay. Now, the left arm goes up. Bend your elbow. 
the right arm comes to the waist, and then you're trying to wiggle your fingers together. Now, you might be like me. I'm very asymmetrical on this one, and I cannot do it on this side the way I can do it on the other side. Too bad. Life goes on. Breathe into whatever you can do. Do the best you can. Let the rest go. And then bring everything down. Give everybody a wiggle. Take a breath. Ah, good. All righty. So let's do the clock. Stand comfortably. You don't have to be in Tadasana if you, if you don't want to. Anyway, push your pelvis forward for 12, to the right for three, back for six, to the left for nine. 12, three, six, nine. 12, three, six, nine. Now smooth it out. You can have a little bitty circle like this. You can do a medium circle. You can do a great big circle if you really bend your knees into it. Try out the various sizes, see which one you like best or not. Good, come back to center. Now this time it's 12, nine, six, three. 12, nine, six, three. 12, nine, six, three, 12, nine, six, three. Try out the various sizes. Lovely. All right, let's shake that out. Take a deep breath. Let's do the, the queen of balance poses. We're going to bring our chairs back for the tree. Now, once again, I want all four of my feet on the sticky mat. To do this, I want my chair on my left because we're going to be standing on the left leg. So find your drishti. It's a little spot on the floor or off at the horizon that will not move. Stare fixedly at your drishti. Turn your right leg out to the right, 90 degrees. Put your foot where you want it. There's a wealth of places you can put it. Find your balance and then decide which of the five arm positions you want. It can be hips, prayer, goddess, palms facing, yoga mudra. Pick one. When you're ready to come out of it, bring your arms down, foot down, shake out your standing leg, take a deep breath. Ah, very good. So, of course, we're going to do it on the other side. So reorganize yourself so that your chair is available to your right hand when you want it. Relocate your drishti. Turn your left leg out 90 degrees and park it where you want it. And then decide where you want to put your arms. When you're ready to come out of it, arms down, foot down, give everything a loosening wiggle, take a deep breath, and let's sit. Stick out one foot, point and flex.
draw a circle with that foot. Reverse it. Good. Put that leg down. Stick out the other one. Put point and flex. Good. Draw a circle. Reverse it. All righty. So let's stand up. Let's look down at our toes again. We're going to do the toe exercise. So pick up your right big toe. Keep the four little ones on the floor. Put that down. Pick up the four little ones and keep the right big toe on the floor. It's really hard. So you get accustomed to it. This is hard. Put them down. Look at your left foot. Pick up the left big toe, but keep the four little ones on the floor. Put it down. Pick up the left four little ones. Keep the big one on the floor. It's so weird, I know. It's so far from the brain. Okay, pick up all 10 toes, spread them apart, put them on the floor. Good. Go back to your right foot. Pick up the big toe again. Keep the four little ones on the floor. Good. Down. Now keep the big one on the floor. Pick up the four little ones. Down you go. All right, look at your left foot. Pick up the big toe. It's getting easier. And then put it down. Pick up the four little ones. And put it down. Good. Pick up all 10 toes again. Spread them out as far as they'll go. Put them down in the spread out position. Good, all righty. Well, that's it for the first half hour. We're about to get down on the floor. So for all of you who are not going to join us on the floor, don't forget, I won't be here, but on Friday and Monday, they will play a tape so that you can come here and practice. So happy Passover, happy Easter, namaste. All righty, so let's get down into tabletop. When we get there, let's do a few cat and cow stretches. Head down, belly up, inhaling. Belly down, head up, exhaling. Going back and forth. <laughs> If you get it backwards, don't worry about it. As long as you coordinate the movement with the breathing, that's what counts. Come back to neutral, head and hips to the right. Neutral, head and hips to the left. Neutral, head and hips to the right. Neutral, head and hips to the left, neutral. Good, Alrighty. so let's curl our toes under and do downward facing dog. Lift your butt up, relax your neck, and then push your shoulders back as close to your knees as you can do it. Breathe into it. Try to keep your arms as straight as possible. Relax your neck so you're looking at your feet. Stay as long as you like. When you're ready to come out of it, Touch your knees down, big toes together, knees an inch or two apart, forehead on the floor, unless of course 
you need to roll over onto your back and pull your knees up into your chest. Both of them are excellent resting postures. When you get there, close your eyes, take a deep breath, let all of that work and effort go. Alrighty, so we want to get back into tabletop and then bring your left foot forward to come in between your two hands. And you can slide your right heel, right knee backward a little bit or your left toes forward a little bit so that your shin, your left shin is perpendicular to the floor and you can feel a little groin stretch and you can bounce your pelvis forward and backwards to feel how that stretch feels. When you're ready, bring your left elbow up to your left knee, begin to straighten, bring your other hand up and then decide what you'd like to do with your arms. You can do prayer position or the other moves. When you're ready to come out of it, bring your arms down and down. Now, as we move our pelvis backward, our left leg is straightening, our left toes lift, and we bow over our left knee, and you should feel a huge hamstring stretch. Breathe into it. If you want more stretch, lower your head. If you want less, raise it. When you're ready to come out of it, begin to move your pelvis forward, your left knee bends, your toes come back to the floor, pick up your left hand, move it to the right side of your left foot, bring your left foot behind you, bring your right foot forward. And once again, you can slide your left knee back or your right toes forward. And again, just bounce your pelvis a wee bit so that you can feel that groin stretch a little bit. And you can bring your right elbow up to your knee. Then your other hand, make yourself nice and vertical. Choose what you'd like to do with your arms. When you're ready to come out of it, bring your arms down, come back to your knee, put your hands on the floor and slowly move your pelvis backwards. Your right knee is straightening, your right toes are lifting as you bow over your right knee, breathe into it. When you're ready to come out of it, 
Begin to move your pelvis forward. Your right knee is bending. Your right toes come back to the mat. Pick up your right hand. Move it to the left side of your foot. And let's all lay down on our backs. Bring your knees up onto your chest. Give them a hug. Close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths. And just let go. Okay, roll to one side and come up to a seated position with your feet flat on the floor together. Okay, your knees up. We're going to do the ab sequence. Alrighty, so take your knees off, take your hands off your knees, look at one upward facing palm, then the other one. Meanwhile, pull your abs in. Good, put your hands back on your knees, lean forward, let your tummy go slack, take a breath. All righty. Now, put your knees back together, sit up straight, pull your abs in, roll backwards. Look down at your abs. If they've popped out, pull them in. Take your hands off your knees. Good, come forward, let your abs go slack, take a breath. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our balance point. So once again, roll backwards, take your hands off, pick up your feet so that your lower legs are parallel to the floor and breathe. Make sure your abs are pulled in. Good. Lean forward. Let everything go. Relax. Take a breath. Now, you all know what I'm about to do. I'm about to do the crunches. However, you don't have to do the crunches if you don't like them. You may do something else. You may do all of the things that we just did. You can do the dead bug that I've been showing you recently. You can do something else. You can lay in your back with both legs in the air, making little circles. You have options. All right, here we go. Roll back, hands off, legs up. When you've had enough of that, lean forwards, relax your belly, take a breath. And now our reward, we can lay down and stretch. Release it. Stretch just the right side. Release it, just the left side. <clears throat> Release back to the right. And the left. Good. 
All righty. <clears throat> so now put your feet flat on the floor. And now bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees spill apart in the cobbler pose. If you want more drama, bring your feet closer to your body. If you want less, push them away. Bring your arms up into the space above your chest, interlace your hands, and draw circles on the ceiling using your arms, and you'll give your upper back a nice massage. While the cobbler pose is giving your hips a nice hip opener. You can draw figure eights, you can draw circles, W's, whatever makes you happy. So now it's time to bring your knees back together and let your hands come down to the floor. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> Let's bring our knees up and draw a circle on the ceiling using your knees together so that you're giving your lower back a nice massage. Reverse the circle. Good. Put your feet back on the floor. Put your right ankle on your left knee, right hand on right knee. Push it away. Let it rebound, etc. Now, we're going to do the half pigeon. So take your right hand in between your thighs your left hand outside your left thigh. Pick up your left thigh, interlace your hands behind your left thigh and pull it towards you. You should feel a huge stretch in your right gluteus maxima. Now, if you can't, you can do a few things to increase the stretch. You can pull your arms closer. You can roll a wee bit to your left you could extend your left leg to the ceiling. Use those or any combination of those to get just the right amount of stretch in your glutes. Breathe into the stretch. When you've had enough, release your hands so your left foot comes to the floor, then your right foot, then put your left ankle on your right knee, left hand on left knee, push it away, and let it rebound, etc. Good, now take your left hand between your thighs, right hand outside your right thigh. Pick up your right thigh, interlace your hands behind your right thigh and pull it towards you. Once again, we're hoping that you'll feel a lovely stretch in your left gluteus maximus. If you need more stretch, pull your arms closer Roll a bit to your right or extend your right leg to the ceiling. Just work out this posture so that it does the best possible job for your particular needs.
breathe into it. Ask that muscle to stretch. It's not accustomed to this idea. So be patient. When you've had enough, simply release your hands, your right foot comes to the mat, and then your left. Take a nice deep breath. Let your knees sway a little bit from left to right. Then straighten out your left leg, bring your right knee up, interlace your hands in front of or behind your right knee, pull it close to your chest on the exhale, let it rebound on the inhale, and go back and forth in the wind relieving posture. Bring your left knee up, transfer your hands to your left knee, put your right foot on the floor, slide that leg out straight and continue. and release your foot to the floor because it's time for deep relaxation. So if you have socks, sweaters, blankets, pillows, cushions, anything you need to stay warm and comfy while you're, I almost said sleeping. No, we're, we're not really gonna sleep. Although if you're really tired, you might. And then arrange yourself on the floor in the world's most comfortable position Close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and let go. Surrender to gravity's pull. We can be grateful for gravity. We'll not float around the room, bonking our noses on the walls. And for these few moments, we are off duty. There is nothing that we have to accomplish. We've already accomplished it. We have gotten here. We have participated in the activity. We have done our best. And now it's time to release our efforts and rest. So it's time to scan the body, looking for groups of muscles that are reluctant to give up their achievement mode. But unless they do, they will never be able to rest. So this is a vital part of yoga practice, learning how to let go and welcoming an opportunity to rest. There are many times when we are responsible, when we perform our duties. This is not one of them.
So now it's time to wiggle your fingers or toes, make any loosening motions which might feel good before rolling to one side to come up to a seated position. When we get there, we'll put our hands in prayer position, sit up straight and tall, close our eyes, lower our heads, and give thanks for this day. And lifting our heads and opening our eyes, we can say namaste, namaste, namaste. I hope you have a wonderful Passover and Easter. Enjoy the rest of the week. I'll see you a week from Friday. Thank you. Hasta luego.